Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Superheroology, the show that looks at the theology of superheroes. Yes, Alexis, that's what I said, the theology of superheroes, because we know for a fact that our God is a part of everything. We can find him in everyday life all the time, even the heroes that lead us closer to, to values and virtues and, and, and taking the time to take care of one another, which is really what superheroes do. On today's episode, we look at Natasha, Natasha, the Black Widow. I want to introduce my Marvel in-house expert, my Marvel in-house fan, Alexis Grace, who's going to tell us exactly who Natasha is. So Natasha was originally trained as a KGB spy, and then Clint Barton, who was part of S.H.I.E.L.D. at the time, also known as Hawkeye, oh, was Hawkeye. sent in to eliminate her. And he gave her a chance to defect and join S.H.I.E.L.D. as an agent, and she took the offer. So then she ended up working for S.H.I.E.L.D. And her story though, like her childhood, is kind of not great. She was part of General Dracov's Red Room, which was a program that indoctrinated young women, girls, into the KGB. And it was really intense, there was a lot of training, and part of the graduation ceremony was forced sterilization. That was General Dracov's way of killing the maternal instinct to make them better killers and also making them more subservient to him. With Black Widow feeling like any form of meaningful connection had been ripped away from her, she was really struggling. She wanted to find community and family and she felt like she wasn't capable of that. Okay. Whoa, that is a story. Who is Natasha Romanoff? Who is the Black Widow? Well, we always have to go back to the point of origin. Mm -hmm. And she was a normal girl, born into this world in the image and likeness of God. That's exactly who she is, just like you, just like me. So who is she? Until the forces of darkness, dare I say, tried mm -hmm. to alter her. She was just like everyone else, a beautiful, fully functioning human being made in the image of God. Okay, tell me this, why did we choose her to look at today, this, this beautiful image of God, human being, transformed into a spy and killer, unable to be who she was because of the sterilization process. Why did we choose her? What's the why to all of this? Well, throughout the Marvel Cinematic Universe and also in the comics, we get to see her relationships with each of the Avengers grow. And she was particularly close with Hawkeye's family and his kids. Ah. So through her like interactions with the Barton children, we just see that she was still capable of the connection that she thought she had lost, that she thought General Dracov had stolen from her. At one point during Avengers Endgame, she actually says that being part of the Avengers made her better. And even after the Avengers had been disbanded, she was still trying to be better because of them. She had something to fight for. Why? Why would we look at Natasha Romanoff, the Black Widow, in terms of a theological approach? Well, I think you just kind of explained it to us, <laughs> Alexis, that she was made in the image of God. And the world around her tried to deter her from being who she was. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they thought they did a good job, psychologically, physically, biologically. And yet, that, that part of her was always there. The spirit is always there. The soul is always there. Her goodness was always there. Mm -hmm. even, even the call to motherhood was there. They couldn't get rid of it. Makes me think of the call to holiness. You know, being made in the image of God allows us to hear his voice. We are called to be like him. We are called to be holy. We are called to be good. We are called to care. And we see that in someone who was actually reprogrammed not to hear that call to holiness. Yeah. All right. Well, what are we supposed to do with that? The who, the why, what do we do with a character like Black Widow in whom we see a call to holiness, even though they tried to drag her away from that. What can we do that with it in our everyday life? Well, I think it's a good reminder for us. Job 36, 15 
says, but he saves the afflicted through their affliction and opens their ears through oppression. So we know that God can use really tough situations in our lives to strengthen us, make us better, make us holier. And I think we see that uh, in Black Widow. Okay, yeah, no, that, that, that makes a whole lot of sense to me. What do we do with a message that reminds us that, you know, we live in a broken world mm -hmm. and there are all kind of voices calling to us. There were all kind of voices calling to her. And yet, when we remain true to who we really are and we're made in the image and likeness of God, we're called to relationship with ourselves, with one another, and ultimately with with him. And I think in her life, we see that even when the forces of the world can be strong, there is something in us that is always stronger. That's what superheroology is all about, looking at these characters whose lives remind us of our own humanness, the, the, the broken beauty of the human race, reminding us that we always have what we need in Jesus to get us beyond anything that the world might throw at us. And so, until next episode, remember, when properly understood, everyone can be a superhero. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed Superheroology, the show that looks at the theology of superheroes. And if you did, please do subscribe to Catholic TV's YouTube channel and do not be afraid to hit the bell for notification. Remember, every week a new episode, Superheroology, right here on the Catholic TV YouTube channel.